Hello, welcome to the Excel Olympics YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk charts. And what we're going to try to recreate is this beauty. So, a chart that is showing the minimum and the maximum value within, you know, a range of values. Now, this is actually showing not just the maximum value, but also the date on which that maximum value occurred which may seem silly at this point because we only have this many dates, but if we had much more, right? If these went, I don't know, down to here, now this makes sense, right? Because I don't even have that, the 23rd over here, but I do see it up here. So this kind of makes sense, right? So this is what we want to do. This is what we want to uh, kind of show. And let's see how that's done in Excel. So we're going to start with the data and nothing but the data. So this is just data. It's random data. So it's going to, it's going to change all the time. So it's, you know, we're going to see some shifting going on. So first off, let me show you how a basic min max chart would look. So what we would want is a column chart that would have a green column where the max is, red column where the min is, and the rest of them would just be, let's say, gray, right? And that one can be achieved with a bit of formatting magic. So let me show you that one first. What we're going to do is we're going to need two more columns on this. Either way, we're going to need two more columns, and that would be your minimum and your maximum. But what we're going to do is we're going to do it like this. So our min and this is not a table right now. Let this become a table. So the min, we're going to say if this equals the smallest value in here, then I want you to return that. Then give me that. But if not, just leave it blank. Right? That is our minimum and let's do a max right next to it. And more or less, we're going to take the same formula. But we're going to change it slightly. Instead of the min, we're going to search for the max. There it is. Right? And now that we have this, now we can create a chart. I'm just going to do it like this. I'm going to place myself somewhere within the range and do Alt F1. That to me was always the easiest way to do it. Now at this point, it went all over the place and that is because it doesn't really know what to show where. Um, you could, you could make this easier by only starting with this, doing Alt F1 and then adding those two. Or just to show you, I'm going to start with this mess and I'm going to clean it up. So I'm going to say, well, what did you just do, right? And the only thing it's got as a value is the max. So first off, I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to say chart data range should be this, right? But then I want to edit this. The axis label range should be this. Right? And then the values should be, series name should be this, and the series value should be this. For our next column, we're going to do the series name should be this, and the value should be this. Right now we have all of them basically. So we have the max, we have the min, and we have the value. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to place the max and the min above the value. There's a reason for that, and I'll show you later on. So I now have something that looks like a chart. I'm going to put those away. I'm going to format the data series by creating an overlap between those. So let's make them wider and let them overlap completely. And right now, I can see that I totally blew it up here. 
and let's just change that. So that should be under the value and that should be under the value. Right, and now it's showing me the max and the min, but they're not the right color. So first I'm gonna change the color of this. So this one should be more or less just, you know, some light gray, because that's not the focus, right? The focus should be this one, and this one should be red, and the focus should be this one, and this one should be green. And at this point, we have something that looks kind of cool. But now we want to take it a step further. Now we want to say, yeah, okay, you know, looks okay. But let me see the numbers up here. Let me see those numbers. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. How are we going to show those numbers? Well, we're going to say, so here's the minimum. And now what I want you to do is to give me data labels. Which is all fine if it wasn't for these zeros down here. Now, there are two ways to get rid of those or to deal with those. One would be to simply lift the minimum of the axis. If you lift it to 100, the zeros would not show. Makes sense. But that's not, you know, that would be frowned upon by every Excel professional. So what we're going to do rather than that is we're going to take this and we're going to say, well, we want to, oh, no, I just did that one. Let me go and select it one more time. So like this, right? we need to select all the labels for the minimum. And then we're going to say format the labels for the minimum. And the way we're going to format those is we're just looking for the number, right? And what we're going to say is, this is where the magic happens. We're going to say, give me the positive number. Don't give me the negative. Don't give me the zeros and don't give me text. You should look at this video if you're not familiar with this, because this is the best format that you can learn in Excel, uh, custom format that is. So if I add this, I have a great format up here and there's no zeros anymore. And now I just do the same over here. So I say add data labels, but now I have all of them, right? So now I go to this one, right click, format data labels, and again, 0, 0.00, semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. So don't show me the negative, don't show me the zeros, and don't show me text. And there it is. And what's brilliant about it is this will move, right? As the max moves, as the min moves, everything moves. Brilliant. This is just brilliant. But we can take this a step further because the problem with this one, if you take it as a problem, is we have the entire axis. Right? And we have it because, well, it's kind of correct to have it. Because that way, the difference between the two is being evaluated towards the whole value. And that is the way it should be. Right? But let's put this one aside for a bit. And let's create a new one. And let's go this time. So this time I'll do it like this. I'll just bring this in. And then I'll change this into a line chart. Right? So a line chart, you see how those borders just moved, right? Much better. So if I start with this, and I could do the same over here, uh, you'll see the end trick. So the end trick we're gonna do here will be very important. So now I'm gonna add to this chart my min and my max, right? So I'm gonna say select data, add. First, I'm gonna add my min, that is this. And then I'm gonna add my max, that is this. Thus far, you know, nothing special, <laughs> definitely not looking good. And now we're gonna do this. Now we're gonna say, yeah, okay, you know, First, I'm going to deal with this one, format, and as far as the line goes, I want the line color 
to be, you know, something light and definitely much, much softer. So something like that. And then I'm going to deal with the, I think that's the max, I'm not sure. So with the maximum, there should be no line, but I do need a marker. And I'm going to put a marker as the built-in, let's just do this one. I'm going to do it a tad smaller. And the color I want it to have is green, right? because it's the maximum. So the color is green. And now let's go for the min. And again, line, there should be no line. I should have a marker. And the marker should be the built-in. Now you can choose any one, but uh, any one of them, but I'm going to choose this one. And the color should be, let's pick the red one like this. Right? So this is the chart we have right now. It doesn't look like much, right? So if I now go over here and remember, I'm going to add two things now. So I'm going to add data labels, but I'm going to add more. So I'm going to need more options. And to the max, I'm going to go add data labels. And let me see where the important options are over here. So I need the value and I need the category name. So give me the date and give me the value. And then I'll do one more thing. I'll say show that above because that's the maximum, right? I should have that above. And I'm going to format the number. And I'm going to say the number should be with two decimal places, right? So I'm going to format a number slightly differently. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this. So I'm going to say, oh, I just did it wrong. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to say add data labels, more options, add the value, add the category name, put it below because that's the minimum, and then format number and just give me two decimal places like this. Thus far, looks like something, but definitely doesn't look like this, right? And now we just, but we're just one step away from that. And this is where, you know, John, John Peltier, he's the charting guru among the Excel MVPs. He always says that charting in Excel is all about smoke and mirrors. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, yeah, these zeros are actually, you know, they're creating these that are just making everything bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of the zeros, oh, that, that went terribly wrong. So instead of the zeros, I'm just trying to find where I moved everything here it was this is where it still worked so instead of the zeros we'll just do this we'll say or actually instead of the blank space we'll just do an a so we'll force an error and we'll do the same with the max so we'll just force an error over here and what that does is it makes it invisible to the chart and we just killed two flies with that stone because not only did all our markers disappear that were not the ones that we want also do you see how the axis shifted now it's no longer starting at zero because it doesn't need to right and now we can actually see the movement of the axis as it occurs and this is how you create a min-max chart two ways in Excel. Pick the one you like. I think they're both kind of brilliant. And they're both actually showing the same data, just in a different way, right? So I hope you like this video. If you did, tell me so in the comments below. And I'll see you on the next one.